This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Welcome to our second Shir in Archas Chaim Rosh, sponsored by my good friend Yol Klugman and family, Lili Nishmas Mishulam Ben Moshe, Chavbas Yudaka and Klugman, and for the successful Shidduchim of their children. As we learn the uh, third and the fourth uh, piece in the Archas Chaim Rosh, and uh, we start with the chain min hasheker v'chazav, and so too should one distance themselves from falsehood and deceit, from lying and deceit. Now, you know, to really learn this properly, Musr <laughs> is not an intellectual exercise; it's hard work. I mean, it's. Almost a cliche. Yeah, don't, don't lie. But, you know, to be an Adam Hayasher, a straight person, is very hard. It's a lot easier to live with occasional lies. You don't have to have a hard night with your wife if you could say you were late because the bus came but it was full and you had to wait for the next one. So even though uh, she had plans and you promised, but it's not your fault. But the truth is, is you were late because you just decided to sit and schmooze with somebody and you forgot that your wife was waiting. Now, to say that will make you have a more difficult night. They'll get you in hot water. You have a lot of explaining to do. And uh, it's a lot easier just to say, well, the bus was full. So if a person wants to live the Urcha Yitzchayim and Lasur Mimok Sheimavis to sidestep the sneers of death, it's not easy. It means that a person has to have integrity. Now, we have to know that David HaMelech says, Ani kirvas elikim litayf. I, to be close to God is good. Now what does that mean to be close to God? It means to be like God. Now we know, the, the signature of Hashem is truth. That's why Baresh is bar elikim. The last letters are emes. Baresh is tough. Bar is Aleph, Elikim is Mem, that spells Emes, because Hashem's signature is truth. Now, what does that mean that Hashem's signature is in truth? I remember that there were a lot of letters that Ramosh wrote for people, and you knew that Ramosh, this was before you could scan a person's signature, you could tell he wrote it from his signature. You recognize his signature. You want to know if something is godly? See if it's truth. If it's not completely truthful, then that's not godly. If you want to be like God, you have to be truthful. Uh, it's interesting. Shmuel Anavi wrote Megillus Rus. And after Rus converted, Shmuel still refers to her as Rus Hamoyavia, Rus the Moabite, which is strange because we know we're not supposed to mention about the Ger's past. So the Medrash says that the reason why she was called Rus Hamoyavia is because when Naomi asked her what happened with Boaz, she said what happened, but she told the order wrong. So Shmuel chastised her, there's still some of the Moabite clinging to you. Because a Jew would never veer from the truth, even to get the order wrong. Truth is a very big part of who a Jew is. A Jew has integrity, honors his word. And, of course, for many of us, we get into bad habits. As the Masil Sisham says, there are people, they tell stories, and they tweak the stories. Every time they tell the story a little different, giving themselves a bigger role in it, making themselves more of a hero, uh, until they almost believe what they're saying is what really happened. But those are people that are not loyal to the truth. Truth is, you know, 
the river is Ephraim, Rabbi Ephraim Greenblatt, one of the, all of Shalom, one of the great Talmud of Moshe, in his uh, responsa, uh, says a few questions that Erlich people asked to show you how there are people that are loyal to the truth. Somebody wrote him a shayla. He's sending matzah to a relative in Eretz Yisrael. And he wants to know if he could write. No, he was sending it to a relative in America. And he wants to know if he could write on it fragile glass. Because if he writes fragile matzah, they might not know what matzah is. But on the other hand, maybe he doesn't want to do with the matzah a lie. And to write fragile glass is a lie. Another question he, he mentions over there is, is that uh, somebody was collecting in Eretz Yisrael, uh, the Chosin family gives half for the Dira, for the house, and the Kalas family gives half. Now, the Kalas family had the money, but the Chosin's family didn't. So he wanted to go to collect for the Chosin, he wanted to know if he was allowed to say he's collecting for Achnos Kala. Even though he really wasn't collecting for Achnos Kala, he was connecting for the Chosen. Another child that he brings down over there is that in shuls, the Gabbai walks around a lot of times with two pushkas. They're unmarked, and they're both for the shul. He says, is that lying? Is that Kenevis Das? Because people think it's for two different things. It's interesting, I heard once from David Feinstein that he said that the reason why they did that is because it was the old bench-style sh- sh- shul where the shamash walked down the middle and one pushka for was for one side and one pushka was for the other side. That's why he had two pushkas for the same thing. But this is the way people thought. A person has to develop the attitude that truth is important. I want to be a man of my word and to bring up our children that way, not to send the children down when there's a mashulach at the front of the home and tell them that my parents aren't home. That's teaching a child to lie. Right? Uh, we have to be very careful. And, 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 and if you make a promise to a child that you'll buy him something, you've got to buy it for him. So otherwise you're teaching that truth is not important. And truth is very How important is it? Well, think about it. It says in the Torah, Midvar Sheker Tirchot, from lying you should distance yourself. Now, it doesn't say Midvar Ritzicha Tirchot, it says Lois Hilzach. But it's not sufficient to say Lois Shakru, thou shalt not lie. It says Midvar Sheker Tirchot, distance yourself. That's how much we have to work on keeping away from lies. Don't put yourself in a position where you're going to have to lie. You have to be very careful with this. Don't allow yourself to be put into a situation where you're going to have to lie. Now, what's the difference between Sheker and Kozov? So, the Gain says that lying is when you lie from the get-go. Kozov is where you plan to do it, and then later you don't do it. The Malbim says a little bit different. The Malbim says that Sheker lying is recognizable right away. Kozov is only recognizable after the fact, later on. Now, it says, Sheker ain't no raglayim. If you look at Sheker, the Shin, the Kuf, and the Reish are standing on edge, on only one piece. Emes, yesh lo raglayim. Emes is firm. Right? The Aleph is two feet. The Mem is platform. The Tuf is two feet. Because Sheker is fleeting. It's going to fall apart. After a while, it's going to fall apart. There's no permanence to show you. MS, MS is enduring. You know, it also says that Sheker only thrives with a crowd. You know, when something isn't true, you have to gather a bunch of people to lend credence. MS, you don't need a crowd. And that's why Sheker, all the letters are next to each other. Shin, Kuf, Resh. You have to have a crowd. MS, Aleph, Mem, Sof, they're far apart. Um... Now the next halacha, now the next statement, this is also a big... By the way, if you want an incentive to tell the truth, it says one of the groups that will not stand in the presence of Hashem in the next world 
is the Kata Shakronim. Now, since in the next world, the great pressure is Tzadikim Yoishvim Vatroiseim Baroshayim Venenim Meziv Ashkena. The righteous will sit with crowns on their head and benefit from the divine splendor. That's going to be. And if you think that that's a small thing, I always say that's why today there's 500 channels on television. If there's 500 channels on television, how many channels do you think the Shechina has? Ein Cheke! There's no end! Basking in the Shechina is an eternal pleasure with billions of channels. But the person who speaks falsehood won't be able to face Hashem. That's a big incentive to be truthful. And now we come to Dalit. And the Rosh says, distance yourself from late sunnahs. Late sunnahs is mockery, scoffing. Now, what does that mean? You now, we're taught that the word late, Lamed Tzadik, is because the maker is Lamad, he thinks he's learned, and he thinks he's a Tzadik. He thinks he's a know it all. And he mocks and he scoffs. You know what it says about mockery? Litzonis achas doicha meyateichachas. Here the Rav gives a fiery schmooze and gets people seriously thinking. And then one person says in the back, he said the same thing last year. He didn't even bother preparing. And boom, it diffuses the whole effect. One mockery could push away a hundred chastisements. I'm going to make Litsanis a little bit more real to you. Litsanis is people that are cynical. When a person is a cynic, he doesn't take things seriously. And if you're a cynic, you won't become better. That's the big danger of Litsanis. You know, and it's a safety mechanism that people have. Because people don't like to change. They don't like, people are comfortable with the status quo. And rather than change, it's easier for them to take down the person that's giving the musr a peg or two and to mock it than to have to really try to change themselves. You know, I tell people, Tillam starts off with Ashri or Ish Asher Loi Holach Bats Asrisham Uva Moishav Late Simlo Yashav. Rav Miller once asked, why does Tillam start off with such a negative idea? Tillam, which is so beautiful, why doesn't it start with something beautiful, something eloquent like Anis Vila? David Amel said, I'm prayer, Miz Mishir, Toiv Lahaida Islam. Why does it start off with Ramilla said the first step in the career of prayer is to know where to sit in shul. Don't sit in the back. Why would you opt to sit in the bleachers if you could sit in the front seat, right next to home plate, right next to the Arun Kodesh, right next to the Chazan, right next to the Rav? If you choose to sit in the back, your family will grow up with the people that run out to a kiddush club. With the people that talk during Chazar Tzashat. Now there are people that are quiet in the back too. But generally people that are out of it gravitate to the back. He says the first thing in a career in tefillah is a babayish of and lo yasha. We have to be careful that we're not a leitz when we talk in front of our children. Oh Yeah. The Rav was at it again. This principal, he's not old enough. He doesn't have experience. I don't know where they picked up this Rebbe. Be careful. Remember, you're the ultimate authority in your child's life. And if you're going to knock that authority, one day your child won't listen to your authority. Sometimes somebody comes over to me. Could you help me? My, my daughter is, is dating somebody. He's no good, but she, he, she won't listen to us. Maybe she'll listen to you. And I'm really internally upset. I can't tell them. But dummy! The whole, the whole time you're raising your children, you always talk bad about authority. 
Now when it counts, you want them to listen to authority? It's a little too late for that. So distance yourself. Not only shouldn't you be a scoffer, but distance yourself from it. Stay away from people that are making fun. Stay away from people and saying, oh, look at the Holy Rollers. Yeah, what, what's going to be the new thing next? Be careful. It's an infectious attitude that could cause great harm to one's spirituality. I want to thank you for joining us. Remember to do the Mishnah. It's 718-906-6471. If you'd like to sponsor a share, 718-916-3100. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.